Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a three-year-old named Kylie and I also have a 16-month-old named Mia. So quite some time ago now, I went ahead and purchased a set of bean bags for my girls to play with, not for any particular activity in mind, just a merely open-ended activity choice to be available on their shelves for them. We only have a set of six, but let me tell you, these little bean bags, these unassuming little objects have received so much love. My girls play with them every single day in more ways than I possibly could have ever imagined. And since the time that I purchased them, upon doing my own research, I've come to find out that there are actually several different Montessori activities that you can do that use bean bags. So I thought, well, this would be a great thing to share with you guys because who doesn't love getting several different activities out of one purchase? So from one busy parent to another, today I'm going to be sharing with you five different activities that you can do with bean bags in your Montessori home. Now real quick before we get started with the activities, I just wanted to let you know that the set of bean bags that I purchased for my girls are a handmade set that I purchased online and I will leave a link in the description box down below if you're interested in checking them out. But these are also super simple to DIY at home. All it requires is a little bit of extra spare fabric, a needle and some thread, and something to fill the bean bags with. And this could be something as simple as rice or very small dried beans. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. So if you have those materials on hand and you are feeling a little bit crafty, then you could very easily make a set of DIY bean bags for your child to use. However, if you are not interested in going the DIY route, as I said, there are many different options available online. So I will be sure to leave links to the ones that we own as well as a few others that I've seen that I would recommend just in case you are interested in purchasing a set. Now, bean bags by their very nature are actually kind of pleasing to hold because they have a little bit of weight to them. They almost kind of conform to your hand as they sit on them. And what would make it even more interesting, especially for very young babies, is if the bean bag material on the outside were to include a variety of different textures. And that's the first activity that I want to share with you today. Now, this activity is a great one to introduce to even the youngest of babies. Even as young as four to six months old, as soon as your child is able to pick up an object and manipulate it independently, this would be a great time to give them a basket of perhaps five to six different textured bean bags and allow them to just use their senses to explore. Providing them with a basket like this would be a great way to spice up tummy time, but even if they are sitting up independently, just having them sit down and explore the basket of all these different textures, this is something that really intrigues and engages is a young child. And just as a little side note, the bean bags that you see Mia exploring here are not actually bean bags. They're little fabric texture squares that we've used for other activities. And since I do not actually have a set of bean bags that vary in texture, I decided to use these for the purposes of demonstrating for you guys for the video today. But again, if you have a set of bean bags that do have different textures, they can be used in exactly the same way. And an extension that you can do with this same activity for a slightly older child, roughly between the ages of two and a half to three years old would be a good time to introduce it, is mystery bag matching. What you'll need for this activity are two matching sets of differently textured bean bags. And what you'll do is place one of the textured bean bag sets into a basket, and then you'll place the other set into a little bag of some sort. And this can be like a small purse or a little drawstring bag, just something that your child cannot see inside of. And you'll have them select one of the textured bean bags from the basket and explore it and feel the texture. And then you'll have them reach into the bag and use only their sense of touch to feel around for and identify the matching textured bean bag that they're holding in their other hand. So they're actually being challenged to use only their sense of touch, their tactile sense, to make a correct match between the two bean bags. And in Montessori, this is often called a stereognostic bag because the stereognostic sense is the ability to identify something using your fingers and your memory of what something feels like. So they're using that sense to make a match and explore the textures that way. The next activity that involves bean bags is color matching. And you can introduce this activity as early as 16 to 18 months, just kind of depending on whenever you notice your child begin to start discriminating between different colors. This activity is very simple to DIY at home. If you have a small set of bean bags, for example, we only have six of them, then you can simply set them up on a plain white background and then use your camera to take an overhead
overhead photo of the bean bags all laid out and then print out that picture and if possible you can laminate it just to make it last longer but that's not necessary and then you can offer your child a basket of the bean bags next to this little color matching mat that you've created and then you can allow your child to match the different bean bags right on top of the exact picture of those bean bags. Now I would say that it's important that you approximate the size of the bean bag on the sheet of paper the best that you can to the actual size of the bean bag so that when your child places the bean bag on top, they for the most part match up. So if you do have a larger set of bean bags, and I would say large would be any more than six for the purposes of this activity, then what you would probably want to do instead is to take a photo of each of the bean bags individually and then secure a much larger white poster board so that you can print out a photo that is roughly the right size for each of the bean bags and then you can space them out appropriately onto the white poster board by yourself. And then they'll all fit on there and they'll be the correct size. It is important for this activity that if your child does not make the correct match, that it's okay. Over time, as your child's ability to discriminate between different colors and understand the concept of matching gets better, then they will be able to self-correct and they will recognize when they've made a mistake and they'll put the right color on top of the right picture. So if you notice mistakes in the beginning, just try to let it go. Just let your child explore and learn for themselves. The next Montessori activity that you can use bean bags for is early counting work. And this is an activity that you can introduce probably as early as about two years old, maybe two and a half. It really just depends on when your child begins showing a natural interest in numbers and counting. This activity is wonderful for helping your child learn number recognition and beginning to associate an actual quantity with what that number looks like, which is a very abstract concept for young children. So what you'll need for this activity is a set of large tactile numbers for your child and a set of bean bags. Now, if you happen to have a set of Montessori sandpaper numbers available, then by all means, go ahead and use them with this activity. But if you do not, because they are fairly expensive, then do not worry. This is super simple to DIY. All you will need is a set of larger index cards, a big permanent marker so that you can draw the numbers on the cards, and then a little bit of glitter glue. Because what you'll do is you'll actually create your own sandpaper numbers by drawing the number on the card nice and bold, very easy for your child to see. And then you'll go over the black part of the number with a really thick layer of glitter glue and allow it to dry for about 24 hours. And the goal here is just to create a number that your child can actually trace with their finger and they can feel what that number feels like. And it's accomplishing the same goal as what sandpaper numbers, the traditional ones, accomplish in a Montessori classroom. But once you do have your numbers and your bean bags ready to go, you're going to see Sit down with your child and you'll lay out each of the numbers in order and then you'll show your child how to place the bean bags underneath the numbers according to the quantity so you'll say one trace it and place one bean bag and then two and then trace it and place two bean bags. And then once your child has had a chance to observe you doing this, then you can kind of pack it back up, reset the activity, and then allow your child to have a turn doing the same thing. And as we said earlier with color matching, if your child does not replicate exactly what they saw you doing, if they don't trace the number with their finger, or they don't say the number, or they put the incorrect quantity of bean bags underneath the number card, it's okay. As your child learns and as they become better and more proficient at recognizing different numbers and quantities, they will self-correct. So just let them explore and have a little bit of fun with it. Now in the video of my daughter Kylie doing this activity, I only went up to the number three because I only have six bean bags in my set. So that was the highest that I could go in doing this activity with the bean bags that we had available. But if you have more bean bags, then you can certainly go up to number five, which I think would be ideal for children who are just starting out doing this. The next Montessori activity where you can use your bean bags is a practical life activity called walking the line. This activity is wonderful for helping a child learn how to slow down and control their movements, control their own bodies so that they can perform very precise movements such as very carefully and slowly walking on a line. 
Now, when walking the line is first introduced, there are no bean bags involved at all. Most young children find it actually quite difficult to walk steadily along a line without any other factors involved, just their own bodies and that's it. So if this is the first time that your child will be trying out walking the line, I would suggest starting there with no bean bags. But once a child has had some experience with walking the line and they feel pretty comfortable with doing it and it looks like it's becoming a little bit easy for them, then you can introduce the new challenge of adding bean bags into the mix, which is really going to challenge them to maintain their own balance because they can't look down or in any other direction really except forward as they try to balance the bean bag on their head following the shape along the floor. The shape that you create on the floor can be very easily made with just a bit of masking tape or painter's tape, which very easily is removed once you're done with it. And you can use any shape that you want really, although a circle or an ellipse of some shape is usually the best shape to go with. If your child is successful in walking the line with a single bean bag on their head, then of course you can add to the challenge by asking them to balance two, three, or maybe even more bean bags on their head without them falling off as they walk around the line. And if you are doing this activity with more than one child at a time, which makes it more fun, then you are going to also have to show them how to stand equidistant from each other. So have them get on the line and hold their arms out and try to make sure that they're staying at least an arm's length away from the person on either side of them. And finally, the last Montessori activity that involves bean bags is basket toss. So this is something that is really good for gross motor movement and helping to develop your child's hand-eye coordination. I would likely introduce this activity somewhere around the age of two and a half to three, or whenever you notice your child really starting to show an interest in trying to aim a ball or other objects for a specific target. So for this activity, all you need is some type of large basket or box and a little basket of the bean bags and a roll of masking tape. And what you'll do is you'll set up the basket at least a foot or two away from a little line that you've made on the floor using the masking tape and show your child how to stand behind the line and bring your toes right up to the edge and then select one bean bag at a time and attempt to toss it into the basket accurately. And it's pretty likely that even if the basket seems pretty close by your standards, for a young child, it's actually going to be quite difficult to make the bean bags into the basket accurately. So if they do miss some or all of the bean bags, then that's okay. Just encourage them to go around when they're done collecting all the bean bags and then they can get back behind the line and they can try again. And you can allow them to repeat this activity for as long as they want to. Now, if your child does have exceptional hand-eye coordination skills when you introduce this activity and they feel like it's easy, then you can simply add to the challenge by making the basket further and further away until you've kind of found the right level of challenge for them where they're not necessarily getting it in every single time. And yes, it is totally fine if a younger sibling wants to get in on the action. They are obviously not going to be quite as successful in being able to follow all the steps of the activity with standing behind the line and aiming for the basket, but if if they want to get in and have a little bit of fun with it and practice their hand-eye coordination too, then the more the merrier. And I do have one bonus activity to share with you guys today that is not necessarily a Montessori activity, but it's something that my preschooler loves to do and she will often set this activity up for herself. So I thought it was worthwhile to share with you guys. And basically all she does is use her bean bags as stepping stones. So what she'll do is place them in a line and try to hop from one bean bag to the next, or sometimes we'll place them in like a little bit of a zigzag pattern and challenge her to hop in different directions and make sure that she stays on the bean bags as best as she can obviously because they're a very small target but she'll use them kind of like little stepping stones and that's something that she really enjoys doing so if you do have a child who is capable of skipping or jumping then this could certainly be a fun activity that you can introduce to them as well so those are some ways to use bean bags in Montessori activities. I'm sure there are lots of other ideas out there as well. So if you have any to share with us, then please be sure to leave them in the comments down below. And if you are interested in learning more about how to implement Montessori practices at home with your children, I do offer a comprehensive e-course that walks you through it step by step. So I will leave a link in the description box down below if you're interested in learning more about that. And just in case you are new to my channel, I also wanted to let you know that this video 
is part of a much larger series on this YouTube channel called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori at Home with your children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching more of, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you next time. Bye.